honestly, I think the problem is you'll never find all the Slurpee flavors operational. When you enter, typically you'll go to one of those Quickie Marts or, you know, Quick Check 7-Eleven, whatever they have out by you. Right, I'm going to have different things than you're going to have. And you're going to see the cherry, the blue. I like the Coca-Cola. That's my go-to Slurpee. Um, that's what gets me excited. One of the things always has the red light blinking that the syrup, I guess, isn't ready and it didn't mix or something. And that's very disappointing. So generally makes things difficult. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And as much as I wanted to start off this week with some autopilot stuff, the new stuff's not just not ready in my tenant yet. So today I am going to do something I've had a lot of questions about. We're going to go through how to quickly set up, well, so quickly, we're going to set up Windows Hello for Business so that your uh, cloud native devices have no problem uh, using the passwordless authentication like the PIN or biometrics to authenticate to on-prem resources, which is very timely given that we turned on the uh enter private access for that so we're gonna get into that today yeah i mean it is a big deal frankly that's how you ruin someone's summer get rubik's solving for the modern workplace okay so let's talk about the windows hello for business experience um you know as far as accessing on-prem resources go right so you know i do have so let me sign out here and we'll take a look at the configuration a little bit but i have it set up and that means i can sign in with biometrics a pin fingerprint so i'm gonna use the pin i do have line of sight to my domain controller all right so let's go ahead and try to access our share see i'm being prompted for uh the pin here and it's not letting me in it's prompting for something so it's like what does it want well we already have SSO enabled so what it wants is it wants the password I'm gonna sign out and sign back in with my actual password so I'm gonna change the sign in option to the password proper right So let's try the same thing. Same file share. No problem. Right in. So that means I can SSO in. That's not the problem, but I have to configure the domain to be able to accept the passwordless uh, authentication. And that's where the Cloud Kerberos trust model comes in. So on our domain controller, we're going to open PowerShell as administrator. And what I want to do is I want to install the module first. So install module. Azure AD hybrid authentication management. Confirm. Nope. And force. Okay. We should be able to import the module. Azure AD hybrid. There we go. Okay. Let's clear the screen now that we have that. Okay. So the first thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to see if we have a cloud trust already enabled. And what this is, it's basically a Kerberos object that exists on prem to handle the, uh, the ticket granting ticket authentication between anything coming from Entra and the server. That was a lot of words. So let's just break it down to this. So we are going to do now let's make this a little bigger. There we go. So get Azure AD Kerberos server. So we have to give it our domain, rubixdev.com. The user principal name, this is on the cloud side, so that's gonna be my cloud credentials. And then we need to give it domain credentials. So domain credentials, and we can actually just make that prompt us with get credential. So I'm gonna say Steve, that's my on-prem credential. And then yeah, there's nothing here at all. So that's fine. So now what we want to do is we actually want to set that. So we're going to do set Azure AD Kerberos server domain rubixdev.com. The user principal name. This is the same thing. Rubixdev.com. And of course, the domain credentials. Same thing. Get credential.
Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm already offed in with my Rubix uh, dev.com Entra account. It may prompt you for authentication. All right, so let's run the first command again. And see what we have. Ah, now we see something different. So we can see the user account, right? Computer account. Uh, we can see that we have a cloud ID. Okay, we can see what version we're on, the key itself, and the cloud display name. So one thing you could do too to check what's going on here is we can actually look in our domain. So we can go to our AD users and groups. It's dev domain controllers now take a look at this so yes we have the primary domain controller but we actually have this azure ad kerberos object okay um essentially it's a read-only domain controller but it's not associated with a physical server so this will generate those ticket granting tickets for us so with the setup completed on the domain uh for the cloud kerberos trust now we have to go into intune and create device configuration policy to tell the PC to basically use the Cloud Trust authentication with Windows Hello. Okay, so we want to go to our Windows configuration profiles and make a new policy. And there are three settings we want to make sure we have here. So we're going to choose Settings Catalog, and we're going to call this Windows Hello uh, Cloud Trust. And you can call this whatever you want really doesn't matter um i'm gonna add i'm going to search for windows hello and i could see the windows hello for business category and yeah a lot of stuff here so we are looking very specifically for uh use cloud trust for on-prem auth uh we want to require security device and we also want the use passport for work. So once we have those, we would make that enabled, make this true, and passport for work should be true as well. Next, next, and we're going to assign this to our device group. Okay, so with all that set, I'm going to sign out again. And we're going to sign back in with our PIN. Now there's a few things we can do to make sure that we've applied policy correctly, um, that it actually is getting the ticket granting ticket. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open the command prompt as the user, and let's do a dsreg command status. So one thing you'll see here, if we look up the SSO state, we have a refresh token, all that good stuff. Um, but take a look here. On-prem TGT, yes. Cloud TGT, yes. So that means we have the ticket granting ticket, um, you know, available to us. So it's been configured correctly. Another place to look would be in the event viewer. So if we go to apps and services, Microsoft Windows, I'm going to go all the way down to the user device registration. And I'm looking for an event 358, and you can see there's plenty of them. And that's basically letting us know the profiles applied and uh, cloud trust for on-premise auth policy is enabled. Yes. So we're all set there. So now I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. I'm going to access the same drive, even though I'm signed in with my PIN. And there we go. I can SSO right in, get to the stuff I have to get to, and I do not need to provide the password. This is actually a lot easier than things used to be, given the fact that we, uh, you know, used to set up like a cloud PKI infrastructure on-prem. You had to do some work with like an IAS web server. A lot of stuff had to be done. Uh, but thanks to the Cloud Trust model, it's literally that PowerShell command, and you just set those policies. And it's a really really nice system and it's going to help you take that one step forward to get to a passwordless model so um let me know your thoughts on it if you're using it in the discord same old we'll be seeing you